I joined the travel industry quite a long time ago. I actually started as a uh, trainee in a Thomas Cook branch in Liverpool uh, when I was 17 uh, due to sort of family circumstances and I've never looked back. It's been fantastic. Had uh, very wide ranging roles within Thomas Cook, both in the UK and internationally, including six great years in the USA. Uh, I then moved into the Thompson Travel Group in 2000 and became the Chief Executive of Lampoli uh, and had a great time there for a few years and I've been with my current company, Advantage Travel Centres, for almost eight years now. I had a great career with Thomas Kirk and uh, with the Thompson Travel Group, Lampoli, which is now two of course. And I was approached about eight years ago by a headhunter to become the Chief Executive at Advantage Travel Centres. And that was an interesting uh, development for me because I've, I've always worked for the big two organizations for the vast majority of my career. And that here I had the opportunity to move into the independent travel agent sector and shape the fortunes and future of Advantage Travel Centers. Advantage Travel Centers is the largest independent travel consortium in the UK. We have a gross turnover of over three billion pounds. Uh, we operate both in the leisure travel sector and also corporate travel, business travel as well. In fact, we're the only independent uh, consortia group that actually does both. Uh, we are by far and away the largest travel retailer in the UK uh, in aggregate size. Uh, we've got over 800 locations. Our gross turnover on leisure is about £2.5 billion. And we also have a substantial corporate travel business as well. So we're servicing all the needs of our customers in both, both the areas, if you like, both uh, leisure and corporate. Uh, and within leisure, we have a high degree of specialization. So we're not just into mass market. We're very experts in cruise, adventure holidays, activity holidays, and, and so on. In fact, we're the leading seller of specialist tour operator brands in the UK. And the other factor about uh, Advantage as well is that we're an international company. We're part of a global group called WIN, W-I-N. Uh, we're a shareholder in that business, and we've now got representation in over 40 countries around the world. And that helps both our corporates and our leisure businesses. We moved into the international space a few years ago because we recognized two things. Firstly, uh, that our corporate travelers, our business travelers, uh, need to travel internationally and therefore want to be serviced in the countries that they go to. Also, they have subsidiary companies, so they may be a UK-based company, but they might have subsidiary offices in South Africa, Australia, and so on. So it was important that we could give that global reach to service them around the globe, wherever they were. And also on the leisure side, we've now built up a network of what we call destination management companies. And this is where our travel agents in the UK can deal directly uh, with ground handling companies in those vast range of countries to get access to unique product that may not be available in the UK marketplace. I think we've come a long way in Advantage Travel Centres. I mentioned earlier that we've got 800 locations now. We're very diverse in terms of the products we're offering, uh, but we're not standing still. We're going to continue to consolidate the independent travel market and try and bring as many people under the Advantage Travel Centres uh, umbrella uh, going forward. Uh, we're going to focus on being very specialist, as we have been in recent years, and making sure, sure that the, we're giving very expert uh, advice and service and products uh, to our customers. We're also ensuring that we actually are becoming slightly unique in the sense that we'll be offering products that won't be readily available in the marketplace as well. We've also invested very heavily in technology, so we have state-of-the-art selling systems, uh, which is a one-step shop. Uh, sorry, I'll say that again. Um, we've also invested very heavily in technology, so in, we have a great selling system which is the best in the marketplace. It's a one-stop shop, an aggregator system, and it gives our sales staff everything that they need in order to provide customers with expert products and, and, and advice. Uh, and we're a leading light as well in all distribution channels. People tend to think of independent travel agents just being on the high street. We're not. We are on the high street, but we're equally online. Uh, we have call centers. So whatever the distribution channel is, we operate in it. I think it's important to look ahead. Uh, within our business, we've always got a five-year horizon, although things change uh, quite frequently in the travel industry, and you have to adjust uh, your plans. But really, our principal focus is on the customers. It's really in understanding our customers, building up 
superb customer loyalty, making sure that they, they stay with us, if you like, but also anticipating their demands. So we're going to continue to evolve the products that we offer. Uh, it's really about having control of your own destiny. Uh, we have great relationships with tour operators, airlines, and so on, but it's also making sure that we add that value of something better, something different, that ensures the customers will continue to want to come to Advantage Travel Centers. Well, there's no question the industry's had a fairly tough time since the last quarter of 2008 with the global recession, financial crisis, and so on. And yet the industry's proved to be quite resilient in that time. The market hasn't grown in the last three years, but nor has it declined very much. And what that tells you is that customers still need and want a holiday. You know, that's high up their wish list, if you like, and they'll forgo other things before they sacrifice their main holiday. But equally, customers have become much more discerning. They're really focused on value for money now. Uh, and that doesn't mean the cheapest, it means value for money. And also, we're now finding that with the experience that consumers have and the places that they've already visited, they're really looking for something different. They're looking for experiences rather than just two weeks on a beach. Two weeks on a beach is still an important part of the overall package uh, industry and holiday industry, but people want to experiment more. They want to take spa holidays, they want to go mountain trekking, you know, all these exciting things. Unfortunately, there are businesses, tour operators and agents who provide those sort of facilities. So the market's continuing to evolve. Package holidays still has an important role to play, but it's really the specialization of people becoming much more adventurous and wanting to go to Machu Picchu and all those sort of places that is actually coming through for quite clearly now. Interesting trends uh, in the industry. Of course, if we go back 10 years, uh, it was dominated by package holidays. Now, package holidays are still a substantial part uh, of the industry, and they do offer really good value for money. And of course, those products have evolved as well. Uh, more flexible days, it's not just seven nights and 14 nights, differentiation in terms of exclusive products and, uh, and, and properties and so on. So package holidays are always going to be a mainstay of the industry. But what we have seen over the last 10 years is the growth of independent travel. That's been fueled in part by the introduction of the so-called no-frills airlines. Uh, such as EasyJet, Ryanair and so on, but also the intranet uh, has given people much more flexibility. So I think what we're going to see is a continuation of the trend to flexibility. People want to be able to dictate the type of holiday they want rather than actually being told this is the holiday that you should have. And I think it's going to be a lot more discerning. So I think in trends, firstly, I'm very happy that we're in the holiday space, if you like, in terms of travel, as well as corporate travel, uh, because it will continue over time to continue to grow. Um, so that's a good place to be from an industry. But I think we've got to become much more discerning as far as customers' needs are concerned and requirements uh, and tail tailor and cater to those. Um, it's always struck me in the industry that one of the big failings of the travel industry is that each year they go out and spend money trying to recruit customers but historically, the industry has not done enough in actually looking after its existing customers. And I think that's where the prime focus has to be in the next few years. Take care of those customers that you already have. You know, you've already acquired them, you've nurtured them. Don't let them go somewhere else. And it's also far more expensive to attract new customers. I think there are a number of challenges that the wider industry actually faces. The first is that we're competing for discretionary spend. Uh, so it's very important that the products that we offer, the caliber of the services that we offer are first class because travel is an emotional uh, factor really, particularly on the leisure side. Uh, and therefore, you know, it's the highlight of the year for many people. And we have to get it right. We have to continue to evolve those products uh, and so on and make sure that when customers are choosing about, well, what should I spend my money on this year? You know, a new car, a redo the kitchen or a holiday, that the holiday remains uh, very relevant to them. Uh, I think the factors also that we need to consider um, in terms of trends are not just the evolving requirements of customers in terms of different types of products, different experiences, but also to ensure that the service standards associated with those are very high. And then we have the broader aspect of um, taking care of the planet. And this is really around sustainability. And this is making sure that when uh, we send people to various um, destinations, that there's also care and attention within those destinations to protect them for the future. I think one of the questions I'm often asked is what were the highlights of uh, my career, notable successes and so on. But actually, when I think about it, um, 
it's been fantastic all the way through. You know, I didn't imagine when I joined Thomas Cook when I was 17 years of age that I would actually have the career I've actually had. You know, I've been managing director in Thomas Cook, both in the UK and internationally. CEO of Lampoli, I'm now running um, a very successful independent travel group with Advantage. And the experiences I've had, um, you know, can't be replicated. I've literally worked around the globe. Uh, and I never envisaged when I was growing up in Liverpool that that would be where my career would take me. So I can't really identify any one highlight or individual success. I think it's been a whole continuum uh, and a marvellous career. The one thing I would say, though, is that I've, I've always felt very passionately about people because no business can succeed unless you've got the right people with the right motivation. Uh, and it's very important that you continue to invest. And I guess the biggest sense of pride I've had is to see quite a lot of people along the way that I've mentored or helped develop who've moved into very successful positions in the industry. Uh, and that probably gives me the greatest source of pride. The travel industry is a great place to, to enter into, really. If you're thinking about a career, it's very exciting, it's very diverse. And, and there's lots of opportunities. You know, I found from my own personal experience that there really aren't any barriers. If you've got the will, the drive, the acumen to move forward, it doesn't matter at which level you come into the industry. Um, you can actually uh, succeed and, and move, move through the industry into the sort of areas that uh, you can flourish in. What I would say, though, is if you're coming into the industry, is that it is a people business. It's not only the people that work in the industry, it's the, the customers that you, you have to serve and, and actually nurture as well. So you've got to be very people oriented. You've got to be able to not only motivate yourself, but motivate the team that work with you uh, and also ensure that you've got a primary focus on the customers. I'd also say that you need to think very carefully about what your proposition is. It needs to be different. There's no point in coming into an industry with a Me Too proposition. It needs to be something the customers will say, well, this is really special. It's really different. But above all else, um, you know, somebody said to me a, a few years ago, uh, that, do you look after the customer first or do you look after your staff first? And I've always thought that that's an interesting question. But actually, if you get it right with your staff, you'll get it right with your customers. I travel extensively. Um, I take full advantage of the holidays that I have available to me and I, I travel the world. You know, I go back to the USA uh, quite a lot because I used to live there for six years and I've just recently been to California. In fact, my son got married in Las Vegas. Uh, so that's the type of holiday. They're generally relaxed and chilling. I'm not really a person that goes for adventure type holidays. I like to be able to chill out a bit uh, and read and uh, you know, do sort of local sightseeing and that sort of thing. But I have been around the world. I've been very for fortunate in my career to travel extensively, particularly through um, Asia, uh, which I absolutely love. From a personal point of view, well, obviously my core focus is obviously on, on my role. Uh, but I do switch off from time to time, although people tell me I don't because I'm always on my BlackBerry. It's very hard for me to think about what my favourite destination is, but if I had to say, it would be the island of Maui in the Hawaiian Islands. It's absolutely perfect. It's everything you could imagine a Hawaiian island would uh, look like. You know, it's lush vegetation, lovely beaches, the people are brilliant. Uh, it's a long way to travel from the UK, but when you get there, it's really worth it.